Hey, I'm so glad that you are with us this morning. There are a bunch of kids back in our kids' zone right now, and they are uh, eating donuts with their kids. And I just came from there. I didn't eat any donuts while I was back there. But I just came from there, just wanted to kind of check it out, and they're having a good time. But for you dads who are here in the room, you dads that have joined us online, happy Father's Day. We're glad uh, that you are with us this morning. You know, Father's Day is just kind of a little different than Mother's Day because dads are just wired a little bit different than moms in the first place, right? I I love the story about the wife who was standing in the doorway of their newborn nurseries, uh, newborn son's nursery. And their newborn son was sleeping in the crib, and dad, her husband, was in there just kind of watching over the crib, watching uh, their little boy sleep. And she noticed all these different emotions. There was like delight and wonder and joy and excitement and anticipation and even a little bit of disbelief that was just kind of on his face. And at one point, he kind of took a step back and he said, wow, that's just amazing. And he was smiling from ear to ear. And she was just so touched by his unusual display of emotions. And so she went into the room and kind of slipped her arms around him and whispered into his ear, a penny for your thoughts. And there was a moment of silence before he took a step back and he said, you know, when you stop to think about it, it really is amazing. How can anyone make a crib like that for (laughs) $49.99? Now, that just kind of sums up a lot of dads, doesn't it? Well, dads, we say happy Father's Day. We're glad that you are here uh, with us this morning. With today being Father's Day and we're in this series on the family, I thought today would be a good day to go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. So if you have your Bible and you want to turn there in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 6, I thought today would be a good day for us to talk about how as dads and as moms too, right, our role is to be raising our kids spiritually. Our role is to be passing on uh, our faith to our kids. Faith is really passed from generation uh, to generation. And I, I... I want to say this up front, okay? I don't want anybody to tune me out for the next 25 or 30 minutes. I mean, I realize that some of you uh, here this morning, your kids are grown and they're out of the house and maybe you're on to grandkids now, but I want you to know that you still have a lot of influence over your kids. You still have a lot of spiritual influence with your kids. About a week and a half ago, as I mentioned Neil's leading worship for us this morning, we got together for lunch and while we had lunch, we just talked about faith. We talked about some spiritual things and so I don't think that You know, when our kids leave the house, I don't think that that's the time that we stop discipling them, like that role comes to an end as dads and as parents. And so I don't want you to tune me out if your kids are all grown and gone, and I don't want you to tune me out if you don't have kids yet, because I'm guessing that maybe you've got some kids in your life that you can be like a spiritual parent to, or you can be a spiritual aunt and uncle to. And at the very least, I think it's important for you to know and understand what your spiritual family here at RCC believes about kids and faith. And what we believe is that it's up to the moms and dads, it's our role and our responsibility as parents to be raising our kids spiritually, to be leading them to Christ, to be raising them in Christ, to see their faith grow. It's our role and responsibility to be discipling our own kids. If you were here back in March, we were going through Vision Sunday together, and you may remember I said that as the church, we wanted to partner with parents to help you disciple your kids, right? We don't want to do it all. And and and. And it's not that we're trying to be lazy or trying to slough off our responsibility by saying that we don't want to do it all, but we believe in God's Word that as the church, we're not called to do it all, that this is a role and a responsibility that parents have to be discipling their kids, raising their kids spiritually, bringing them up in Christ. And so we're going to go to Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to take a closer look at this this morning. Now, here in Deuteronomy 6, Moses got the entire Israelite nation together, and he's got some really important things that he wants to say. And he kind of addresses parents at the beginning of his speech. And so let's just go to verse 4 here in Deuteronomy 6. And let's see what Moses has to say here as he's talking to the Israelites. Verse 4. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down. And when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And so what I think Moses is telling us here is that as parents, it's not enough to just care for our children. It's not enough to just watch over them and guide them and help them with their homework and give them rides and go to their activities and and feed them and all those other things that we do as parents, okay? And understand, those things are really important, obviously, right? But I think Moses says that's not all that we're supposed to do. 
I think he says that part of our role and responsibility is that we're to bring up our kids spiritually, that we're to be discipling them and, and helping them build a relationship with Jesus. And so I think if we take a deeper look here in Deuteronomy 6, I think we see some of the things that we should do in order to fulfill this role and get this done, all right? And so when you came in today, if you grabbed one of our bulletins, on the back, there's some space where you can uh, take some notes and, and fill in some blanks if you'd like to do that. There's also a, play, a place in the RCC app to do that there as well. And so what do we need to do to raise our kids spiritually? Well, first, I think we need to walk it. If we're going to be serious about raising our kids spiritually, about passing on our faith to our kids, then I think one of the first things that Moses tells us to do is that we need to walk it. And what I mean by that is, is that we need to live out our own love for God. We need to live out our own faith that we have in God in our homes, in our families. Let's go back and look at what Moses says again, verse 4. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So I love how Moses says that because he doesn't say that God is some vague force or he's some abstract notion or some imaginary friend. He's the one true and living God. And so Moses goes on. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And so I want you to notice this as Moses begins this speech before he says anything that we're supposed to do with our kids. He tells us what we're supposed to do as parents first, right? So he tells us that God is the one true and living God. And then he says, here's, how, here's what your response to God should be. We ought to love him with this complete love. And so Moses says, you love him with all your heart, soul, and strength. In other words, you go all in in your love for God. And so we need to be living this out in our homes, and we need to go all in in our love for God because he went all in in his love for us, right? In the New Testament, John says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So He went all in for us, right? I mean, friends, you and I, we've been saved. We've been rescued from our sins, and we've been rescued from our sins because God was willing to go all in in His love for us. He sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to give His life for us. Jesus came and willingly laid himself down on the cross, and now we have this opportunity to live this new life. Now, I realize that some of you who are here this morning, you've not made the decision to follow Jesus. You've not made the decision to surrender your heart and life to him. And so if there's anything I could say to you this morning, if there's anything that I'd really want you to understand, it's this, all right? God loves you so much. He loves you with this outlandish love. I mean, he's gone all in in his love for you. He sent his one and only son, Jesus, to give his life for you. And Jesus willingly came and went to the cross for you. And so if you're here this morning and you're just not sure about this Jesus thing, then here in a few moments, I'm going to be at the back of the room uh, toward the end of the service, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to just come and talk with me, and we'll talk about this love that he has for you and how he went all in in his love for you by sending Jesus and how you can go all in in your love for him. But this is what we need to live out. We need to go all in in our love for God. Look at what Paul says in Ephesians 2. He says, because of his great love for us, I'd love to change that to say because of this outlandish love for us, right? Because he's gone all in in his love for us. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And so because he goes all in, because of this great love, this outlandish love that he has for us, now our response is to love him with all of our heart, soul, and strength, to go all in in our love for him. And my wife, Marianne, and I, we started dating in the middle of my uh, senior year at Lincoln Christian University. And by the grace of God, it's about the only way that I can explain it. But by the grace of God, at the end of my senior year, I graduated from college. And so when I graduated, we, I moved to Owensboro, Kentucky, and I started an internship at a church there in uh, Owensboro. And Mary Ann, she went back to her hometown near Lafayette, Indiana, and we kind of kept this long-distance relationship going for a while until a week before it was time for her to come and visit me at Owensboro. I called her on the phone one day, and I said, you know, maybe it's not such a good idea that you come out and visit me. And so I broke up with her over, over the phone. And it was because I wanted to date somebody else down there in Owensboro. Now, listen, you don't break up with anybody over the phone. That's not the way to do that, all right? It doesn't turn out very good. 
But a few months later, so I did that, and she didn't come visit me. A few months later, after school had started back and she'd gone back for her fall semester, I came to my senses. And so I made the five-hour drive from Owensboro up to Lincoln, and I told her that I'd made a mistake, that I wanted to get back into a relationship with her, that I was ready to go all in in my love for her, and I wanted her to love me. And so, you know, could we start our relationship again? Could we, could we start all over? There was silence. I was pretty sure that was a bad sign. But I wanted exclusive rights to her heart, and I wanted her to love me. Now, friends, this is what God wants for us. He wants exclusive rights to our heart, and what He wants more than anything else. Of all the things that you can give Him, and there's a lot of things that you can give Him, there's a lot of different ways that you can obey. Of all the things you can give Him, and all the different ways that you can obey, what He wants from you more than anything else is your love. He just wants you to go all in in your love for Him. And he wants exclusive rights to your hearts. And when you go all in in your love for him, and when he has exclusive rights to your heart, then it should affect the way that we live. Paul talks about this in Galatians 2. He says, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so when we go all in, we no longer live for ourselves, but now Jesus is living in us, and so it should affect the way that we live. And listen to me, friends, your kids are going to see whether or not your relationship with Jesus is affecting the way, the way that you live. They're going to see whether or not Jesus is really living in you. And so let Christ live in you when you're sitting around the kitchen table. Let Christ live in you when you're in your backyard. Let Christ live in you in the way that you treat your spouse. Let Christ live in you in the way that you talk to your boss. Let Christ live in you in the way that you talk about the people who aren't around. Let Christ live in you when you're posting on Facebook. Let Christ live in you in the TV shows and the movies that you watch. Let Christ live in you in the different situations where you're reacting to different things. You see, friends, we can't, we can't force our kids to have a relationship with Jesus. I, I, can't, I can't even force my own kids to surrender their heart and life to Jesus. And I, I can't even force them to, to follow Jesus in the way that they live every day. So I can't force them to do that stuff, but I can show them. Amen. I can show them what it looks like to follow Jesus. I can show them what it looks like to have a heart that surrenders to Jesus. I can show them what it looks like to go all in in my love for God and to have Jesus living in me. And so I think this is the first thing that we have to do. If we want to lead our kids to Christ and if we want to raise them spiritually, then I think we need to walk it ourselves. Secondly, if we want to raise our kids spiritually, we need to prioritize it. If we're going to raise our kids spiritually, then we have to prioritize. And what I mean by this is if we're going to raise our kids in Christ and we're going to pass on faith, then we need to understand that it takes time, right? That we have to spend time with them and build a relationship with them. Let's go back and look at how Moses says it. I want to go back to verse 4 again just to keep the context here. Moses says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So Moses is pretty clear here, isn't he? In fact, if you have your Bible open, you might circle that word impress there in the text because that's a really key word. And the word that Moses uses there for impress is a word that means that we're going to ha have this great diligence in teaching our kids who God is and how He can work in our lives, and how He's worked in the lives uh, of our families. We, we're going to have great diligence in helping them understand what He has done for us. In fact, Moses says that we're supposed to talk about these things all the time, right? He says, you talk about these things when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. And so this is going to take time. This is going to take some effort. I mean, let, let's just acknowledge up front, okay, what we're talking about here this morning, right, talking about discipling our kids, passing on faith, raising them spiritually. This is not easy. This is not an easy thing to do. And so this is going to take time and this is going to take effort. And even though it's not an easy thing to do, we have to make the time to get it done. We, we have to prioritize it. The Bible says, my son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. So I want you to see there's an assumption here 
in Proverbs 6, right? There's this assumption that we're leading our kids spiritually. And so it says, My son, keep your father's command and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them always on your heart. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. For this command is a lamp, this teaching is a light, and correction and instruction are the way to life. So I want you to hear this, okay? Proverbs 6. Here's what Proverbs 6 tells us. You ready? You, moms and dads, you can lead your kids to the way of life. But it's going to take time. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some energy. I mean, you can't do this passively, right? You've got to build a relationship with them so that they'll have faith. You've got to build this relationship with them so that they will build their own relationship with Jesus. And I mean, Proverbs 6 tells us that what we pass on to our kids when it comes to faith is so, so important. I mean, there's a lot of things that I have done for my kids that are really important. There's a lot of things I'm doing now for my kids that are really important. But Proverbs 6 says that this is extremely important. There may not be anything more important than what we pass on to our kids spiritually because Proverbs 6 says that what we pass on to our kids spiritually, it's going to benefit them for the rest of their lives. It will watch over them. It will guide them. It will speak to them. It's a light. It's a lamp. And it leads them to the way of life. And So this is extremely important for us to fulfill this role in discipling our kids and leading them to the way of life. Now, it's Father's Day, and so I, I want to, uh, I just want to talk to you dads here for just a second, all right? And, and I, I want you dads to understand that I'm talking to myself here as much as I'm talking to anybody else in the room. But I want to have a heart-to-heart here with you dads for just a second, okay? Whether your kids are 2 or 20 or 40 or 50, whether they are in your house or they're grown and they're out of the house, I want you to hear this for just a second, dads. There's a survey out there that says that the average dad spends 17 seconds, not minutes, but 17 seconds a day. So the average dad spends 17 seconds a day in meaningful contact with his kids. 17 seconds. So dads, here's what I want you to understand. What we're talking about here today can't happen in 17 seconds. And so, dads, it's time for us to step up. It's time for us to step up and lead our families spiritually. Let's not leave it to the moms. And you moms, don't don't get offended by that statement, okay? It's not that I don't think you can do it. The Bible says that you shouldn't have to do it. Because the Bible is clear that the role that we have as dads is to be leading our family spiritually. Look at what Paul says in Ephesians 6. He says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. That word for exasperate literally means provoke your kids to anger. And so Paul says, hey, dads, don't provoke your kids to anger. Instead, so he's giving us an alternative here. So he says, dads, don't provoke your kids to anger, but instead... Bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So if there's anything that I can say to you dads this morning, it's this, all right? Hear hear me on this now, okay? Don't check out on the spiritual responsibility that you have with your family. You can't do this in 17 seconds. You've got to build... A relationship with them, you've got to spend time with them in order to disciple them and see them build their relationship with Jesus. And so don't check out on this responsibility. If you need to turn off the television, turn off the television. And if you need to skip the fishing outing or the golfing outing, then skip the outing. And if you need to turn off the computer, then turn off the computer. If you need to turn off the phone, and set it down on the table and talk to them, then turn off the phone, set it down on the table, and talk to them. Talk to them about Jesus, even when they don't feel like talking about Jesus, and get them to church, even when they don't feel like getting to church, and get them involved in a service project with you. We just spent last Sunday talking about how we need to serve like Jesus as families. Get them involved in a service project with you, even when they don't feel like serving. Open up the Word with them, even when they don't feel like opening up the Word. And dads, I want you to know, we're, we're making this super easy for you here at RCC. I talk about this Dive Deeper card that we have every once in a while. These are at the giving tables at the back of the room. Every single Sunday, 
we have this card back there that's got discussion questions on it that goes along with what we're talking about in here on Sunday morning. So during the week, you can be thinking about the things that we talk about here in Sunday morning. And uh, so whoever's preaching writes the, the questions for this card. I can't speak for Andy or, or Matt or Paul or Ethan, but I can speak for myself. I'm not very smart. You guys kind of chuckled when I said, by the grace of God, I've graduated from college. I don't know if that was all that much of a joke. And so the things that are on this card are not really all that difficult. There's nothing on this card that's real complicated. It's just got some simple discussion questions, and we've designed it in such a way that you can sit down together as a family and you can go through this card. So like this week, there's six questions. So maybe you take one question a day, and maybe while you're sitting around the kitchen table, maybe at dinner at night or something, just ask one of the questions and talk about it with your kids and begin to prioritize this so that you're discipling your kids, building a relationship with them so that they can build a relationship with Jesus. And so stop by the table on the way out and grab one of these cards and just begin to go through these different discussion questions. We have them every single Sunday back there for you to pick up, all right? And so if we want to raise our kids spiritually, we've got to spend time with them, build a relationship with them to help them build their relationship with Jesus. And so we need to prioritize it. One last thing, we need to share it. As moms and dads, if we want to fulfill this role that we see here in Deuteronomy 6, then we have to share the truth of God's Word with our kids. Go back to verse 4 again. Look at what Moses says. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them. Talk about them, Moses says. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. So friends, we need to be sharing the truth with our kids. We need to talk to them about the truth of who they are and what God has done for them and how we can live for them and the great things that God can do for them and the great things that we can do for him. And Moses says that we're to put the truth everywhere, doesn't he? He says, put it on your hands, put it on your foreheads, put it on your door frames and on your gates. I, I don't, I don't know, maybe you're like me. Some of you are like a season ahead of me in parenting, and I, I would love to just have the opportunity to sit down and, and talk with some of you one day to see like if you've experienced the same thing that I've experienced, and maybe some of you have experienced this uh, in your parenting, but one of the things that I've discovered, and we have six kids, the oldest is 25, the youngest is 13, and what I have discovered is that being a parent is hard. I mean, there have been a lot of different situations that I have faced with my kids and I've faced, I've, I've faced some pretty, pretty hard situations with some of them. And I find myself from time to time as I'm going through something with one of our kids, and I'm thinking, man, I wish there was some kind of instruction manual for this stuff. You know what I mean? And there's been times when I've gotten on the other side of something and I've wondered, like, did I, did I do the right thing there? Like, did I say the right thing? Did I, did I make the right decision? Ah, I, don't, I don't know. Now, here's, here's something that I've learned as I've, as I've been parenting, and that is that uh, it only gets harder as they get older. Anybody else ever discovered that? I can remember when they were really little, I used to think, man, it's going to be so awesome when they're older because it's going to be so easy. Like, I don't know, maybe I thought like they wouldn't be relying on me for like everything, right? But what I've discovered is, uh uh-uh, it doesn't work that way. They get older and it just gets harder. But I look back and I'm like, you know what? Sometimes I've been right and sometimes I've been wrong. But listen to me, sharing the truth of God's word with your kids will always be right. Psalm 33 says, the word of the Lord is right and true. His word is always right and his word is always true. And sharing this truth with your kids will always be right. 
I love what David says in Psalm 18. He says, as for God, His way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. So, so what does it say there in Psalm 18 that His way is best? No. Oh, is it still up there? Nope, it's not. It's gone. There it is. Nope. There we go. Nope. Yep, yep, right there. Stay right there. Does it say that His... Does it say that His... Good job, John. Does it say that His way is best? It says His way is... Perfect. His way is perfect. Friends, it's in this book where your kids will find the perfect way that God has for them. And understand, this doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. It doesn't mean that they're going to be perfect. But it means that they'll find the perfect way that He has for them. They will begin to understand who God is. And they'll begin to see what He's done for them. And they'll begin to see how they can live for Him and the great things that they can do for Him. And as you open up His Word and you share the truth with them, they'll see His love and His compassion. They'll see His goodness and His grace. They'll see His power and His strength. And they'll see this perfect way that He has for them. And so when we're done here in a few moments, this card that I was just talking about, stop by and pick up one of these cards because on the front, it's got the discussion questions. Then on the back, I've written out some Bible verses that just share some, just some truth of who God is and who we are and how we can live for Him. And so pick up one of these cards on your way out and begin to just go through these Bible verses with your kids and share, share the truth with them. You know, I mentioned a moment ago that... Um, I've learned that as our kids have gotten older, it's, it's gotten harder as a parent. And something else that I've learned is that they get older way too fast. I mean, it just flies by. Neil and his wife, Mary, they have uh, Anastasia, our granddaughter. She just turned one about a month ago. And I, I, I always have to kind of chuckle inside a little bit when I hear them say, oh, she's just growing up so fast. I wish time would just slow down. And I always kind of chuckle because I think to myself, you have no idea how fast it's going to go. And so, friends, if I can say anything about this, share the truth of His Word with your kids today. Don't put it off to tomorrow because before you know it, they're gone. And tomorrow may never come. Because here's the reality, right? Your kids, they won't wait. They will not wait. Author Helen Young, she says this, she says, There is a time to hold my children close and tell them the sweetest story ever told, a time to teach them to wonder and reverence. There is a time to point the way, to teach their infant lips to pray, to teach their heart to love God's Word, to love God's day. For children won't wait. There is a time to treasure every fleeting moment of childhood, just 18 precious years to inspire and train them. I will not exchange this birthright for a mess of pottage called social position, business, or professional reputation. An hour of concern today may save years of heartache tomorrow. The house will wait, the dishes will wait, the dust can wait, but children won't wait. There will be a time when there will be no slamming of doors, no toys on the stairs, no childhood quarrels, no fingerprints on the windows. May I look back with joy and not regret. There will be a time to look back and know that these years were not wasted. I pray there will be a time to see them honest and upright, loving God and serving all. God, please give me wisdom to see that today is my day with my children that there is no unimportant moment in their lives. May I know that no career is so precious, no other work so rewarding, no other task so urgent. May I not defer it nor neglect it, but by Thy Spirit accept it gladly, joyously, and by Thy grace realize that the time is short and my time is now, for children won't wait. The time is short and the time is now. Children won't wait. Some of you know the truth of that, don't you? And so, friends, share the truth with them, knowing that the time is short and the time is now. The time is now to walk it and show our kids what it looks like to go all in 
in our love for God, to have Jesus living in us. The time is now to prioritize it, to be spending time with them, building a relationship with them so that they can build their relationship with Jesus. And the time is now to share it, to share God's truth with them so that they can find the perfect way that God has for them. The time is short. And the time is now. Because children won't wait. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this role and this responsibility that you call us to as moms and dads. To be raising our kids spiritually, to be raising them in Christ. And so, Father, I pray that we are people who walk it. I pray, Father, that we are people who live out this love that we have for you in our homes, that we are going all in. I pray, Father, that we are people who are living, who are living like Jesus. I pray that we are people who are living through Jesus. I pray, Father, that we are people that our children can look at and they see Christ living in us. And I pray, Father, that we are people that prioritize it, that we are spending time with our kids, building a relationship with them so that they can build their relationship with Jesus. Father, that we are taking these precious moments, whether our children are 2 or 20 or 50, that we're just taking these precious moments and speaking these words of life from your word into our children. Encouraging them, discipling them, loving them along the way. So that they can find the way of life. And Father, I pray that we are parents who share it. That we share the truth of your word. That we share the truth of who you are and who they are and how they can live for you and the great things that they can do for you and the great things that you've done for them. Father, that they will know those things, that they'll hold on to those things. Father, thank you for going all in in your love for us and sending your son Jesus to give his life. And Father, we're thankful that he was willing to come and give his life for us on the cross so that we could truly live. And we thank you, Father, for the hope and freedom and purpose that we find in him. We pray these things in his name. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? A moment ago, I mentioned that he's gone all in in his love for us by sending his one and only son, Jesus. And if you're here this morning and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, but you want to know more, you want to know more about this love that he has for you. You want to know more about how you can go all in in your love for him, how you can surrender your heart and life to him and be saved. I'm going to be at the back of the room while we sing this song together, and I would love for you to just make your way back there and just let me know that you want to spend some time this morning talking about Jesus. We'll, we'll spend some time talking. Maybe you're, going through some, maybe you're going through something with your kids this morning. And you would just like to talk with someone and just have someone pray with you. Over here to my right is our prayer room. There's going to be some folks in there. And they would love for you to just go in there and just spend some time just talking with them. Just let them know what's going on. They would be honored to have the opportunity to just pray for you this morning. And so if that's something that we can do, just make your way in there. Let's worship together this morning.